everyone and welcome to this episode of the Performance Cafe Coffee Companions where we are speaking to a friend of mine, Mike Stopforth. Now I met Mike years and years and years ago and I was incredibly impressed by the work that he was doing at Cerebra and uh, managed to catch up with him, uh, at, well, a couple of months ago, cheap as uh, with, with, uh, with COVID ones, never quite sure how long a couple of months ago was and uh, had a bit of a chat to him and he's taken a bit of a change of tack and he is now a transformational leadership specialist and i thought who better than mike to come and talk to us about performance and leadership hi mike how are you hey friend really really good um yeah it was a couple of months ago already it's bizarre how slow time moves and how fast time flies at the same time so yeah um it's good to finally get around to having the conversation Oh, wonderful. And thanks for making the time. I know that you are bustling with all the new plans, but let's jump right in and let's talk all things performance. What to you does, does performance mean? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, such a, it's such a big question, right? Because it is, it's an entirely personal question. And yet at the same time, if you, if you build or start or work for an organization of any significance, you inevitably find that you have to calibrate your definition of performance and success to that organization, uh, to that, that business's ideals um, and intentions. And I guess for me, um, success or performance has always been around how, how much freedom do I have? My, my big metric for, um, for the, you know, the value of the work I do is the, mm -hmm the mastery over my own time performance mm. then would be um what i have to do to make that a reality because we all i think we all whether they are spoken or not have ideas of what success looks like in our own minds and sometimes the way we achieve that the the performance component mm -hmm. um, takes so much from us <laughs> um that that the juice is not entirely worth the squeeze so i think it's really mm. worth thinking of those things in tandem. Um, it's one thing having incredible goals and lofty ambitions. It's another thing thinking about the cost of, of uh, achieving them. And so you've touched on another question here, of course, is what is success? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I probably should have begun uh, the other way around um, and that's on me, but um, I think, I think one of the, byproducts and one of the good byproducts of this COVID era of disruption, if you like, uh, I guess a, a time in our lives where we've been forced to question a lot of the things that we assumed to be true for, for a very long time or assumed to be predictable um, have kind of come under the spotlight. And I see a lot of people, uh, certainly close friends, ex-colleagues, uh, people in the industry who are very sincerely taking a look at what they consider to be meaningful and valuable and, and important in their own lives. And a lot of that has to do with their, their definitions of success. And I guess for a very long time, I, I thought about success as um, either a number in a bank account or the number of people that work for you or um, the number of cars in your driveway to think of the worst possible examples of, of that, you know, the different oh. defined essentially by the things we acquire. Um, there's that great quote in one of the greatest leadership movies of all time, Kung Fu Panda three, um, <laughs> where master Ugwe says to his old student, when will you learn that the more you, the more you take, the less you have. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that, that, a lot of us are starting to think about success more in time, more in terms of the quality of the time that we have, our ability to be present in a moment, um, the freedom to not have to ask permission to do uh, what it is that we want to do, whether it's spending time with our families or building something new or creating something mm -hmm. beautiful. And, you know, depending entirely on what you believe and, and what kind of um, value system you were brought up in, um, you know, a lot of us, I think, are just shifting our thinking towards now. Um, and, and I think that is, I think it's a good thing. You don't want to be flippant. You don't want to completely ignore the long term and the future. And, yeah. Yeah. um, but I think that for me, success really is, uh, about, uh, the mastery 
of my own time and space. Um, and it's kind of been that ever since the early days of Cerebra. I always thought of it in terms of this analogy was, um, can I can I just drop everything and go and watch my son play cricket if I want to? Mm. Um, that felt like a, an important metric for me. And then all of the other variables kind of shift around that because sometimes that is about a degree of wealth. Sometimes it is mm. about a degree of um, influence or the ability to delegate something to a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but but you can calibrate those different levers to get that same result uh, as long as you're willing to make some sacrifices. And and I think that's really what what um, what success has become about for me. And I think you're entirely right. I think so many people have started looking at the whole wheel of life for success, not just just not not just the financial component. Mm. So, how do we take? Because I agree with you entirely. I think we we are seeing a big shift in that direction. And I think the question then becomes: How do I take this in? This 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 redefined sense of redefined sense of performance and success in myself, and put it into my business as an entrepreneur or a leader, because you know it does poo poo some very very long held uh, traditions around what performance and success is. Well, I, I I mean I want to be clear that I'm not in any way shape or form dismissing uh, goals and ambitions that are pure. I mean by all mm. means if 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 you want to be the richest guy in that industry or the, the most successful yeah. girl or the, the biggest, uh, you know, the, the first person to list the business on this, by all means, those are amazing goals. Yeah. Um, but if, if achieving those means sacrificing your well-being, uh, mm. becoming less than yourself, um, if it incurs such a cost that you can barely uh, live, mm. uh, then, I, then I'm going, well, maybe it isn't, um, a complete way of thinking about, I mean, there are people that we, we celebrate and hold up as examples of extraordinary success that I don't, I don't think could have achieved half of what they've done if they hadn't made significant sacrifices in terms of uh, family, well-being, spare mm. time, whatever it might be. I'm just not one of those people. That's not my mm. uh, vibe. <laughs> I like my couch too much. <laughs> um <laughs> But I think uh, the world needs all types of people. What I'm saying, I think more than anything else, is that we shouldn't be lying to ourselves. We shouldn't be mm. our own great deception. Um, we should know exactly what it is that we all have a very clear idea of what, what it is we're working towards and what it costs to get there. Um, because, because knowing both of those things, I think, is the only way you get a complete picture of, of how to... Uh, how to build a, bu a business around it or how to build a team around it or yeah. how to motivate other people to, to come with you. Um, it's one thing uh, painting a, a, a beautifully ambitious picture or vision of what an organization can be. But if you don't set the example um, of, of how to behave in order to achieve that, it's very difficult yeah. for people to get on board uh, yeah. with that same thing. Um, so, I mean, those, are, those sound like clearly obvious uh, ideas around this this notion, but I found them to be particularly challenging in the process of building Cerebra because you you're constantly managing the tension of um, your own happiness, freedom, and well being. This organization that kind of takes on a life of its own, and suddenly you are um, symbiotic with it rather than kind of you know it just serves you exclusively. And then if you have even half a heart, you hmm. start thinking about what it means for the lives that depend on that business and, and the lives that depend on them and, and so on yeah. and so forth. Um, yeah. And it, it becomes increasingly complex to stay objective in that. It's, that's, I guess one of the, the answers to your question then is that you have someone or something, sometimes it's even about writing it on a piece of paper and revisiting it from time to time, that helps you maintain that objectivity about the situation that you're in. So you don't land up swimming all the way past the breakers, realizing you're caught in a, in a riptide and then you just can't get back to shore, you know, just mm. somebody on the shore that's going, hey, here we are, you know, like, and if you need to get back, the way you can get back. And, um, yeah. So I hear you talking about clarity of expectations. 
Yeah, certainly. I think happiness really is expectation minus experience, right? Um, so you're being clear on your own expectations and 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 managing them in such a way that you can at some point. I mean, I know a lot of people who. And let me share a personal experience. I remember probably 15 years ago, uh, at the very genesis of my thinking about starting a business, um, having a lying in bed one night and having a fantasy about what I would do if I ever made a million rand, right? Like what, what I would do if I ever got that kind of money, like mm. ridiculous money and, and what I would do, what I would buy for my dad and for, you know, for the family or whatever. And I remember just having this kind of like, um, and then, and then years later, when we sold our business, the, the number was thankfully and gratefully significantly more than that. And then like, even then it didn't feel like enough because what you tend to do is you move your goalposts constantly mm -hmm. and your expectations move with those golf, uh, golf yes. posts and you constantly upgrade your lifestyle to, you know, mm. just, you've got to maintain some sort of image or whatever it might be that you're doing. But uh, before you know it, you're a different person with a different set of expectations. And that's again, mm. not a bad thing. But it's important mm. to recognize how far the goalposts moved. Mm. Um, again, you know, a lot of people will will achieve something that ten years before that they thought impossible and still be unhappy because of where they've moved the goalposts to. Um, and that's that's a crazy thought if you think about it. Um, your ten year old or your ten years before self would say that's, yeah. that's ludicrous. Right? How lucky are you? Um, yeah. And yet, sometimes I think we get stuck in that trap. I hear what you're saying, and, and you've said it before, and I hear it coming through, through very clearly now again, where you're saying, live consciously. And how much do you yeah. think we do of that as, as business people? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I choose a different word. I worry that the, the idea of kind of conscious leadership or living consciously has, has taken on a bit of a, um, has taken on a bit of a stigma. Um, okay. But I think I think a lot about the idea of uh, being deliberate, um, mm. and and mm. the moment I and I know from my own life the moment I slip into autopilot, um, mm. and I'm going to use that analogy again. The moment I'm enjoying surfing too much, and I forget where I am in relation to the beach, I'm in danger. Right now, mm. there's also other things that become a threat: the weather, the flipping sharks, my inability to swim, or whatever it might be. <laughs> So I've got to make sure that um, that I I have some some barometer, some litmus test, some thing that is anchoring, yeah. that is keeping me uh, aware and and conscious of yeah. how much I'm moving. If I'm going to move, move intentionally, move deliberately. Yeah. If, my, if my expectations yeah. shift, do so. Um, uh, considerately um, and know what, because almost al almost always moving the goalposts means mm. a cost, some sort of a price. Mm. And that price is what we don't often think about. We don't often think about the cost of doing so. We assume that, you know, moving the goalposts comes free of charge. Um, and I think that's, that's helpful to think of is that uh, realigned expectations are great as long as you, you balance the books. As long mm. as you account for what it might cost for doing so. I love that. So we're saying intentional and deliberate. So how do I take this to my team as a leader, that kind of thing? How, how do I take this to ensure performance? Yeah, so I mean, that, that, really, is the, that really is the million dollar question. Because I think most organizations, certainly we find ourselves uh, in this pattern in Cerebro, even as a collective will sometimes find themselves in autopilot. And when you step mm. back and look at what mm. you're doing as a team, there are a lot of things that given five minutes of thought, you would go, why the hell do we do it this way? Why, why are we even thinking mm. uh, in patterns mm. or what evidence do we have to support that this is even the best way to approach this challenge or problem? But we do that because we, you know, biologically, we tend to slip into comfort zones and we, we want to avoid cognitive calories so we don't always yeah. want to um think critically about the way that we're doing things but i mean i would i would say to our clients i would say if, if the reason for anything that you do and i was talking specifically about marketing but this could be true for anything yeah. if the reason for anything you do is it's the way we've always done it then you probably already have an issue it might yeah. not be wrong but at least be intentional about it at least be critical yeah. about it. um and i think the only way 
that you can cor course correct that as an organization is by is by asking number one asking very difficult questions you know in in what ways could we be completely wrong what do we not know for sure um mm. what could we be assuming about our customers that could be completely wrong you know the kinds of questions that mm. are not not normally comfortable to ask as mm -hmm. leadership what very often happens is that if we just open our ears, we'll get that feedback from our staff. You know, the, it's yeah. the welcoming of the dissenting voice, the, the person in the room that's going, I'm not yeah. sure this thing that you're so sure about is yeah. really happening. Um, and, you know, this is one of the great crimes of traditional hierarchical business structures is that the people that are most qualified to give us that kind of feedback, the people at yeah. the call field, seldom get the opportunity to do so. Um, and when they do, yeah. often we're defensive about it as leaders. We're like, hold on, you know, who do you think you are telling me? You know, um, And then we found out later on they were quite right. Um, so I think that that's some of the stuff that we can do. I think really clear communication around intention is, is, is helpful. I don't think you can ever communicate enough what it is that you're trying to achieve, where you're trying to go, what's important in doing that. And we have words for these things. We have vision and mission and values. And and again, because we kind of stigmatize those things, we've diminished their real value. And I think constantly as, as a leader, taking on the responsibility of telling the story of success in your business, building the narrative of your kind of unified purpose, those things are such important skills and such underrated skills. Yeah. But you know when you're in an organization that does that well because the language that people use is the same. Yeah. Uh, the anecdotes that they tell are the same. The, yeah. the way that they speak reflects the speech patterns of the – I mean, it, in history, any great organization, sometimes great and terrible, um, reflect these, these principles of you know, yeah. rep clarity – intention um like i say sometimes those don't have the best outcomes because of the nature of human beings but assuming we are being uh, intentional and magnanimous that can be extremely powerful ways um yeah. to align people to a to a cause 